Well, welcome back to another Life on Cars video. Something a little bit different today. Um, I'm at the Yorkshire Events Centre in beautiful part of England, Harrogate, and I'm at Fully Charged Live North, which is an EV show, an electric vehicle show that I'm attending today. So, a bit different. And why am I attending an EV show when I'm a petrol head. If you've watched, if you're a subscriber to the channel, if you've watched any of my uh, my other videos, you you can obviously suss out that I'm a bit of a petrol head. I like my uh, internal combustion engines, my V8s, anything to do with uh, with petrol and pistons. That's me. And uh, well, there's two reasons I'm here today at the EV event. The first one is it's work related. Um, because I work in education around automotive, I, I need to keep my own uh, knowledge current and up to date. And obviously, electric vehicles uh, are playing a big part in transport in the UK at the moment. So that's the first reason. But the second reason is more of a personal reason for me. I've been a bit of a denier, I must admit. I'm not a massive fan of electric vehicles. Um, I see problems with them. I see... I read reports about the the uh, the resources that are involved in manufacturing the batteries and things like that, and and just I don't know. So I really, I'm I'm here today, maybe to have my mind changed a little bit, maybe to try and embrace the the electric revolution a little bit. And uh, so the plan today is I've got an opportunity today to look at all the the latest electric vehicles that are available some hybrids i imagine will be here as well but from all the manufacturers so every everything from ford um you know uh even the even uh, the manufacturers of the high-end vehicles like mercedes bentley audi bmw and not forgetting obviously the the uh, the new vehicles from korea uh you know your hyundai's your genesis um and uh, chinese vehicles as well that we're starting to see here in the uk so um, hopefully we should learn something together today stick with me on this video and uh, hopefully you'll get something out of it yourselves i'm even hoping to do a road test of an ev vehicle today i don't know which one yet i need to see what's available and if that happens i will probably do a second video about just on the road test because that might be interesting so please check out my videos and uh, you should see if I'm lucky today um, a video of me test driving an EV so let's see if I get my mind changed a little bit today let's see um, if the manufacturers have made progress since the last time I took a deep dive into two EVs and uh, come with me on this journey so let's see how we're going on. Let's get in. I've got my ticket ready and uh, it's looking like the car park's filling up. It's a beautiful day, so let's go and have a, a look around. See you in a bit. The Aura Funky Cat from China. It's always a 
Such a f cool looking car, the Hyundai Ionic. looks like it's stainless steel reminds me of a DeLorean I think the Tesla's starting to look a bit dated, dare I say it. <coughs> Just hasn't changed at all. Sorry Tesla, you've been outdone now by the Chinese and the likes of Genesis I think. those seats are I'm gonna get dirty quick it's just nothing inside nothing apart from a big screen Yeah, you. Yeah, thank you. Hope that rain clears off her. Eh? Sorry? Hope the rain clears off. I know, it's a bit miserable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Good. 
lad in the joint today. Anyway, look, you give them a VS. Yes, yeah, that knows what the universe has been for. Alright, I'll knock them both. I'll grab it now and then. It looks a bit like a mini. Cupras, Leon. And the Cupra Born. I quite like the Cupra Born. It's not a bad looking car. <sighs> yeah, I quite like these. I like the copper accents. Yeah, let's get some grass dragged into it today. Ah. The electric VW bus. The ID bus. Steady on. Okay. Yeah, you don't need to put the phone far. Yeah, keep, keep the foot the accelerator. Well, it won't, it won't, it won't. Oh, that's okay. Basically, there's a sensor in the seat. So when you get in the seat, it, it goes to like the position one. So and the VW ID3, you see a lot of these knocking around nowadays, don't you? Be the same platform as the Cupra Born, I guess. But obviously, with all the VW badging. Nice seats. Nice big uh, moonroof on this one. DZ Trons. There's the daddy. God, look at the price one hundred and four thousand. Etron GT. I've not seen in one of these before, so I'm going to see if I can get a sit in. Almost exactly the same as a tech house. Grab 
So here we are in the Audi e-tron GT. <sighs> Certainly very Audi. It's a bit like my uh, A3. Same screen and everything. Yeah, exactly the same. Nice seats. It's a very low roof line, isn't it? But uh, headroom's all right in the front. Just notice the air vents down here. On my Audi, they're up here, more like what you see in the uh, Lamborghini. Whereas they're just down here on this one. The carbon fiber effect. That might be real. Don't know. I think it would be, wouldn't you, for this price? Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> was offering. <laughs> the M50. Let's have a look. Oh, yeah, completely different to the Audi. Big screen all the way along here. BMW's uh, iDrive. Dead easy to use the iDrive. If you've ever owned a BMW, you just straight, just naturally falls to hand and you know how it works. do like the iDrive. Nicely finished this. Oh, I've just noticed the valet has tried to do the BMW in the carpet. Oh, that's nearly rubbed out. <laughs> Again, nice seats. The seat belts on this look with the uh, the BMW M colouring on. That's interesting. The start stop button is in blue rather than the usual red. £62,000 that. Pilot Sport 4s. M Sport trip. We did have been in, uh, um, about, yeah, about four or five years ago, mate, because the elephants get in the back. Fingers crossed for each other. Yes, yeah, they're the It's interesting, isn't it, on the BMW? Oh, yeah. 
next is the uh, light the, there when you see the tailgate come up. So look what it looks like when it comes to It's a beast, isn't it? Beast of a car. Let's have a look inside this one. Ah, it's locked. Okay, fair enough. Maserati. What's this then? I don't know, I'll have to look this up. Never been in one of these before. That's nice, isn't it? The clock. Oh, I love the smell of leather in here. So it must be real leather, not vegetarian leather. Mmm, it's nice that. Oh, there's the clock. Look. It's nice, up. Huh? Mm. Let's have another look right around the back. It's a beautiful car, isn't it? Thank you, yes. How do you pronounce it? Apparently it should be yellow leather interior, but the How do you pronounce the name of it? So I'll try and uh, drop my Yorkshire accent and put my Italian <laughs> one on for a moment, and it is the Gracale. The what? Gracale. Gracale? Yeah. What's the Gricale. badge on the side say? So that's the um, model, so there's different models. There's GT, the Moderna, and the Trofeo. Trofeo, right. Yeah. So it's a Gracale? Gricale. So it's the Gracale. Gricala Trofeo. Yes. <laughs> well, that sounds very Italian, doesn't no, it? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, we learned something today. <laughs> so I've been so this is a mild hybrid, this uh, vehicle. Apparently there's a fully electric one coming out in about four weeks. And they've snuck it into this EV show because it's a mild hybrid. <laughs> How about a Range Rover, sir? I do love a Range Rover. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, What a biography. Oh, it's never sat in one of these yet, I, so I'm going to take the opportunity to climb into this. Oh, it smells lovely. Oh, yes, look. Oh, God, that's probably the most. Oh, God, that seat's so comfortable. That's the most comfortable seat I've sat in today. I could sit here for ages. Very nice. I think that's 
got it, but it's not switched on. But which, which was really nice because they normally sit quite high up there. Um, well, can't sit here forever. The split tailgate, which is famous on the Range Rovers. Even the bottom's electric. No, look. Oh. What that does? I think it's powered down, to be honest. Porsche Taycan. I'm not sure about the, the looks of these at the front. What do you think? No doubt they're a stunning car to drive, but... I'm going to go and get in the driver's seat of this if I can. First time I've sat in a take on. Let's get that seat back a bit. Oh, so the I have you? Yes. Uh, oh, yes. Is it BYD? It's BYD, which is a, different, which is a Chinese brand. Yeah. Or, uh, I don't know if they're Chinese as well, but I've literally just seen one for the first time. Yeah. I've never even heard of them. No. I think we'll see a lot of cars around Yeah, yeah, I think we will. What's the range of it? Oh, I like the roof. The, the, re the real <laughs> world... <laughs> practical The room. practical range, not what necessarily the manufacturer yeah. tell you. I, I, I tend to quote to mid-200s is realistically what you should mm -hmm. be able to get. It, it's a difficult question to give an exact answer to because there's so many variables. It's not just how you drive it, you're absolutely right. But I mean, even things like the temperature will, will impact. So because the, the battery packs at their best within a, a temperature range of about 25 to 30 degrees centigrade. So which you, which you go down, if you're in winter, for example, in our country, you'll lose 10, 10 maybe 15 percent range. So in a hot climate, you'll maybe get 260, 270. Does the car heat the batteries then when it's cold? I guess they've snuck this in because it's a hybrid as well. That's some machine, isn't it? So the 296 GTB. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna get in. Oh God, that's low. Oh. Jesus Christ. Take some getting in. Jesus. That's a ma manual seat. Let's get that back. Ah, the 296 GTB. But this has got some poke. Look at the seats. Very nice. Yes, wouldn't mind having a go with this. But we'll only be able to sit in it today. Shock absorber adjustment. 
windscreen wipers lights indicators on the steering wheel floppy paddles for the gear change god they're big aren't they yeah very nice Alcantara This is some machine, that. <laughs> Discoloration on the uh, exhaust. on the on the main I suppose if you worked seven and a half miles away from your house. That Ferrari is £368,000 used. Let's move on to the, uh, the Bentley, sir. The Flying Spur. Wow, look at the grill on that. <laughs> Looks like it's got a light in it. Some car that, isn't it? Flying spur. Mulling hybrid. So much this one is. Two hundred and fifty-one thousand six hundred and thirty-five pounds, sir. <laughs> Deposit seventy-five grand. Bloody hell. Definitely know you've arrived if you've got one of these. Oh man, I'm not keen on that badge. Oh, it just doesn't seem right on the back of a Bentley, does it? Hybrid. I think I'd have to have that taken off if it was mine. Sorry. I mean, that's fine on a Prius, but... Oh, no. I'd have that taken off with some floss. Dental floss, it's good for getting badges off. <sighs> oh, <sitting. laughs> Beautiful. Let's get in this. <sighs> Got a good range, ten mile. <laughs> Jesus. What's the maximum electric range on this one then? About twenty six mile. That's stunning. Very comfortable as well. It's the same as my uh, Audi. Exactly the same. Apart from my Audi doesn't have the chrome. Camouflage, you get some chrome and some bits, but. Bent it flying spur. 
Bentley Motors of Crew. Is this a, is this a, it's a plug-in hybrid, this one. Ah, uh, so <laughs> it's not a proper not yet. electric one. No, 2027, our first full electric car. What's the, what's the price tag on it? This one's 252. What engine's in it? It's a three litre V6. What oh, is it? Yeah. Couple of Mercs here, the EQC. God, they've gone big on the grill as well. Looks like a VW, doesn't it? But it's not, it's a Merc. EQB. Quite like this one here, the EQS. It's a nice looking car, isn't it? All the door handles pop up. Some machine, this. See if we can get us in this one. Oh, switch off lights. Someone's left the lights on. Okay, see if we can set them off. I couldn't even tell you where the lights are. No, it's there. There we are. Put it back to auto. God, it's different, isn't it? You know what struck me about getting in all these cars today is that there is some big differences between the manufacturers. Tesla with absolutely nothing, super super minimalistic and then you've got all these different manufacturers with different things and a lot of them retaining stalks and things. I think um, I do prefer a few switches and traditional stalks but there again I'm old school. But that's very nice, isn't it? Look at this. It's like something you'd see on a on a yacht. This woodwork. <laughs> it's a leg rail. It's a big ship, this leg. the wheel trims on this one for aerodynamic efficiency <laughs> actually I don't think that's a trim that might be yeah it's a trim that EQE smaller version of the EQS no holes in the grill because you don't need them I enjoyed that. I've sat in some cars that I've never sat in before and had a look uh, around this JCT 600 sales area. It's really good that, really interesting. Here's Ford's uh, Lightning F-150. The reason it's good is because Facebook is measuring up against it. Uh, Americans are weird. You can measure stuff out in this while you're doing your work. <laughs> of course, it has to have some freedom units on it. That's a big old truck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Are these a Chinese brand, Rivian? American, or American. Yeah, definitely American because we, we were looking at ordering one two years ago. All oh, right. The delay, the delay. I've been telling everyone Americans are probably wrong. But... No, no. Big screens again. Oh, you've got to have an old screen in the car. Old, old hat otherwise, unless you get one of the rows. Yeah, nice, nice. I like, I like the, um, the portrait mode as well. Yeah. I said, uh, yeah, portrait. No, landscape. Landscape, landscape yeah. yeah. It's missing the uh, torch. Ah, uh, someone took it, do you think? Well, there's even old ones, should be a torch in there. I wouldn't get the low, mark, the low battery when I get the big battery. That's me, that's the point. So these American, are they? Yeah, it's a US company, and that's why it's left hand drive. Right. I've been promising a right hand drive for about a year. Um, my wife wants one as a Range Rover replacement. Mm. If they are, I mean, sitting in them, it's not far off a Range Rover. And if you get the SUV version, yeah. Uh, Come for seats. We'll, we'll be screwed on the price, I guarantee it. You can slide a body in there. Yeah. That's a big old machine, like. Got this big EV truck here, the size of that mortar. Batteries both sides. Electra. Just spotted another brand that I've never heard of before. Maxis. Let's have a look. Sort of pickup truck. Never heard of that before. Let's see if I can find out. It must be Chinese, maybe. <laughs> Fully electric pickup. <laughs> Is it a Chinese make Maxis? Yes. What sort of a range has it got, do you know? Up to 200 miles. 200 miles? If I said Lotus, what would come into your mind? How about this? Yeah. <laughs> 
if I can get sit in this car. Let's try. a lovely colour on this Tesla Model S <clears throat> and that's a good way of keeping your pizza warm look put it underneath the back window <laughs> yes it's a nice colour that car that kicked off all the interest I guess with the I remember seeing one of these on top gear Tesla Roadster 2006 first shown in public seen one of these for a long time. Okay. Three wheeling hub. So the purpose behind this is to eliminate drive from the drive axle of the vehicle and all the way and all the pressure of the vehicle will go onto our body if it will. So behind you'll see through the window brake disc is not moving. We use one of our hubs which we have already carried and we've manufactured a three wheeling hub with a bearing inside for a multi wheel to fit on top. So this is for when an EV has run out of charge and all the wheels are locked? To, yeah, so this is for dual motor EVs, uh, front or rear lift on vehicles. It's also for four wheel drive vehicles as well, transmission failure, um, or to reduce any uh, further damage to transmissions. It's also handy for going onto vehicles with uh, brake calipers stuck on. Oh yeah, that's a good so, idea. It's it's got multi-purpose and it just it completely eliminates the drive. And it means you can tow the vehicle then that's with right. the wheels on the ground yep. or yep, or right. maybe two wheels raised. So two wheels would be raised onto our what we call a CRT, which yeah. is a recovery trailer that comes out of one of our vans. Back wheels would still be on the floor. So this dual motor you need to reduce and take away that drive from the rear wheels by using our multi-fit wheel. And I guess you can use that if you've got like um, an automatic transmission that you don't want to be winding up when the engine's off. That's or right. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Thank you very much. No problem at all.
Well, as you can probably tell from the video there, I've had a really good day here at uh, Fully Charged Live in Harrogate. It's, it's been a really good event. I've learned a lot. Um, I've met some really interesting people. And um, I must say, you know, the manufacturers have really uh, upped their game, really, uh, this last few years, by the looks of things, you know, the quality of some of the vehicles, especially, you know, the Genesis. I've been really impressed with that brand. Managed to get a road test uh, of the Genesis. So um, have a look for the video that should be appearing very soon in my uh, in my feeds. And uh, have a look at that, see what you think. It certainly impressed me. Um, but just generally, you know, you, you ride your Kias and uh, your Hyundai's and um, manufacturers that are coming from China as well. They look good quality products that they're bringing in. Price though, God, they're very expensive. You know, the cheapest car that I could find here today was was the Aura and that was £32,000. Um, you know, it's still it's a lot of money. The, the key that I road tested was 63,000. I think it was It's a lot of money um, But I guess you know That's where we are at the moment the price of EVs is still relatively high compared to um, traditionally uh, internal combustion engine powered uh, vehicles But no, I mean I can see a place for EVs uh, I can see that there's a lot of interest it's been super super busy here today a lot of footfall and um, and then the charging side as well the amount of choice that you have now for for a charging um, installation uh, commercially and uh, if you're looking for an installation for your property at home as well there's so much choice and some really clever ideas as well you know the charger that goes down into the floor if you're living on a street and you don't have a driveway you know that's quite a clever idea um, and even charging points that uh, can be tailored to, to blend in with your property colors different materials being used so yeah it's it's a fascinating topic and it's it's obviously it's not going anywhere and uh, it's going to be around for a long time. I think we're going to see more and more manufacturers, especially from China, bringing vehicles into the UK. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, if you did, please like and subscribe. Take a look at the road test that, I'm, uh, that I've done with the, um, with the Genesis vehicle. And uh, there'll be more videos coming along very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.